Hello, IE community, everyone out there, alumni, students, faculty, staff, and anyone else who might be tuning in. I have the pleasure today to welcome Eric Sim to join us from Singapore. He's visiting here, the IE Tower from Singapore. Uh, a very interesting guy. Uh, he has worked in finance at, uh, he was the managing director of investment banking at UBS. Uh, he was in structured finance and derivatives in um, Citibank, you were in Shanghai, you were in, uh, you were in Hong Kong, okay. uh, now you're, you're back in Singapore again. Uh, these days, though, you're, you're not in finance, you uh, have kind of transformed yourself in, in yes. some ways. And you, uh, is it fair to describe you as a, an, a best-selling author, a speaker, an executive coach uh, on the career side and moving into the life coaching as well? Is that Yes, that, that is correct. And uh, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you, so welcome. <laughs> yes, um, it, it is so surreal to know that, you know, two years ago, I gave a, a talk, online talk, uh, to, to your students. And two years later, I'm here. Um, and this is my first visit to, to Spain. And the only reason I'm coming is to visit uh, the students and your university. And of course, uh, to have a chat with you, Prof. Well, thank you for thank you for the visit. So, I mean, uh, many things we could cover. Uh, mm. um, so, we we talk about at um, at IE Business School. We talk about the idea of next best you. Mm. Uh, that our mission is really to to transform our students. You mentioned yes. students from kind of their current version of themselves to this next best version of themselves, which mm. I assume is an executive coach. Um, that that concept is is something that you work on and have a lot of thoughts on. And you know, as part of that, we think about people's career, the hard skills. Uh, we think about impact skills, the ability to make things happen at work, and, and also purpose. So I wanted to, to, to dive in and, yes. at each of those things. So your career. Yes. Um, tell us about your career. I mean, I, 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 you've had some bumps in the road. Tell, uh, tell us a little bit about them. Not some, but many, many bumps, uh, really. Um, I don't know whether you, you read my LinkedIn profile. Um, I shared that I was rejected by Princeton PhD. Devastated that I couldn't be an uh, academic, uh, cannot teach in a university. Um, then I went on to develop my career in banking and I used the MD title to get myself a position uh, as an adjunct associate professor uh, in Hong Kong UST. And that's how I continue to, to teach. Sometimes I feel that you know, failure, that's not the end of things. You know, there are sometimes ways to, to go around it. And um, just now you mentioned about the best version of you. When I was in banking, I always feel I'm not good enough because I didn't come from a privileged background. I didn't go to an Ivy League school. And the fellow MDs around me, you know, some of them, uh, their family can buy banks. You know, one call away, they can reach the richest people in the world. Uh, so you didn't have the, the kind of the embedded network to draw on? No, no, no. So, so then I say, how can I feel better? Or how can I create impact or, or, or do more? Then I, think, then I thought, instead of being the most valuable player, why not become the most improved player? Because when it comes to most improved, I, 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 I'm sure I've already improved a lot. And just that thinking change helped me uh, deal better with uh, the situation. I feel much better about myself. So you wanted to start in academia, actually. Yeah. You, you've thought about the PhD, you got rejected. And, yeah. um, and, and I, I guess you were quite disappointed. And, and then you went into finance and, yeah. and were obviously very successful with the, with the jobs that, that you had. Mm. Um, I mean, what, what kinds of... Um, Personal traits do you think helped you get through that difficult period and, and reinvent yourself based on a new dream, new yeah, aspirations? Yeah. So I try to pay attention to what people say of me. And one of my bosses um, during the annual review said that, Eric, you have done very well, but you're not sharing enough credit with your colleagues. Because this was banking, behavioral feedback you got from the yeah, boss. Okay. Because in banking, it's very competitive. If you don't fight for yourself, if you don't claim your own credit, somebody's going to steal it from you. And so I make sure I get the credit. But after he told me that, 
I really thought, yeah, there are so many people who help me. Um, a lot of time when we close a transaction, it's not just me alone. The support function, the credit department, you know, the junior people and the blessing from the bosses. So I start giving credit to people. Think who has helped me close this deal? Could be the secretary who booked the, the flight at the last minute. The analyst who stay up late two nights consecutively to prepare the presentation material. So when I do that and now when I extend it outside of my work, I gain so much more. People are now so willing to work for me because they get recognition. So you were successful, let's say, on the hard skill side of finance, right? I mean, you're at a senior position in a, at a global bank, top yeah. global bank, and you think, okay, I'm on top of the world here. And then you get this negative feedback from your boss that, uh, you know, on the, on the behavioral side, uh, you're not sharing credit. How did that, how did that feel? And what was your initial reaction? It's, uh, first of all, very uh, angry. Angry, okay. Upset. Um, I've done my part. Is, isn't this how everyone behaves? You know, why should I share credit? This is my work. Um, but after a couple of days, I think he's right. And I uh, experienced the, uh, the gain, you know, three to four times gain after I share the credit. And, and how long was it before you, you, you feel like you kind of changed your habits in, in, in the it, way that you share credit? It took me about uh, six months before it becomes natural. The first six months was like, hey, this shouldn't be his credit or her credit, but I still share it. Uh, but now I feel, hey, people deserve, you know, um, a lot of work is not done by one person. It's interesting, yeah. So I think sometimes in business schools, uh, people get the idea that, you know, I have to do my job and focus on my stuff. And then, of course, I'm doing that um, to build my brand and, and, yes. and to succeed, which, you know, everybody wants that. And, and that's perfectly legitimate. But so you got this feedback that, OK, um, yeah. and it's not when, just about you. Yes. And um, when you share credit, it shows that you are in a much higher position. Only a very confident person, only a person who have big picture will do that. And what else? I mean, so, so if you think about the, you, you have the, your, your finance skills that were allowing you to do your job well, uh, and then other skills like what, your ways of interacting with other people, or any other things on the behavioral side you could share with us in terms of things that contributed to your success in, in finance? I think it's uh, social capital. Social, what do you mean by social capital? Social capital is the goodwill that you have accumulated over the years. For example, helping somebody. Sometimes when we help somebody, it is a very small action from our side, but it's a big deal for, for the students, for example, or for your colleague who need just uh, information. You know, take, it will take me like one minute, but it means a lot to them. So those um, I find myself doing over the years, and now when I transit from finance to my own portfolio career, people are buying my books, you know, in 10, 20 copies because they remember I helped them some time ago. And would you say that, I mean, you have a, a, a quite large followership. You have, I think, 2 million followers yes. just in LinkedIn alone, yes. right? Um, yes. Do you think that, that that attitude that you have towards building and, and maintaining social capital helped, helped you a succeed lot. in social media and, definitely, and building your own definitely. brand? Definitely. Because the, the initial followers are from colleagues and friends. And when even senior uh, colleagues who start following me, start engaging, the junior will follow and people from other banks will follow, people from other schools will follow and that's how I build. So the initial say one to 2,000 followers uh, come from those people who I have built good relationship with. And you mentioned uh, just in a second ago, you mentioned uh, transitioning from finance to, to your portfolio career now with authoring, teaching, mm. coaching, etc. Um, that's, a, that's a big transition. I mean, here you are in, in, in the powerful world of finance, doing very well. <laughs> um, what made you leave that? Number one is um, I thought if I continue, yeah, I'll make you know, some more money. But how is that some more money going to help enhance my life? I, I don't spend a lot, you know, I, I wear a Timex watch. <laughs> um, I don't wear branded stuff. So why gain more money in order to gain happiness? 
can I go to happiness direct without going through money? Did you choose just to just to back up for a second? Did you choose finance initially um, because because it's a lucrative career, or were you also was there kind of a deeper interest in, in it was analytical a, skills yeah. or in, in in relationships and deal making, etc.? Yeah, I wanted. Um, I was an engineer by training. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go into finance to to live a more interesting life because um, I believe one's life should have a different. Uh, should touch different industry or go to different countries. So that's that's how I live my life. So, so finance was kind of the, the, the next adventure at that time, and then you did well, mm -hmm. um, but you decided that uh, you were going to leave and, and, and start this portfolio career. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so what, what was the motivation? So you, you mentioned why you left finance, but what, yeah. so, what was the lure of, of yeah, the change? Yeah, yeah. So when I was uh, in university tw at 22 years old, I didn't have the network, I didn't have the social skills. You know, my family doesn't have this information about the working world or banking finance. I think there must be a lot of Eric Sim out there or Erica out there. Maybe now is a good time for me to share what I've learned you know, in the last 20 over years uh, with these people whose uh, family may not have the resources to help them. So really, is a, I mean, it's fair to say it's giving back. Giving back, but I gain actually a lot more. So sometimes you think giving back is giving. No, in it's return, I gain because uh, I feel fulfilled. And um, it's, it's good to see these uh, students, you know, hosting me, organizing networking event. And then this evening, uh, one of them is going to organize a networking event. Many people are going to come. And that, money cannot buy. So would you, would you say that, that your current portfolio career is, is a purpose-driven career? Do you feel there's a, yeah, it is. some kind of, let's say, um, aspect of it that sort of pulls you in a deeper way than, than prior parts of your career? Yes, yes, yes. So I think for, some, for everyone to, to want to live a meaningful life, money is only one part. Relationship is another part. Fulfillment and uh, health. You know, whether your physical health or mental health. And when you feel that you can create impact on people, that, that feeling lasts very long. If you use money to buy a supercar, you'll be happy for two weeks. After that, you are worried that somebody might scratch your car. Yeah, we attach to the material things that we have. And, yes, and then yes. the experience starts to become negative. Negative, so you need to buy something bigger. Yeah, and it never ends. So you're so you're finding this kind of form of giving back, but also it's it's a it's two way. So you get a lot out of it as well. In, in your relationships uh, and and your work with with executives, mm -hmm. um, anything in particular that that trend that you're seeing in terms of I mean what what, what what's keeping them up at night? What's what's yeah. on their agenda that you're helping yeah. them with? So um, especially for senior executives, those who have um, almost or already reached financial freedom. They wanted to also teach and give back. I think maybe because of the pandemic, they have got time to think. And they also see me on LinkedIn. Um, they want to do something similar. So I'm helping them to transit. Uh, portfolio career, you have multiple sources of income. May not be a lot, uh, but you don't, depending on, you don't depend on one boss or one employer. Mm -hmm. So, so you, it's is it, but is it the, is it doing multiple things or is it more the autonomy uh, that that kind of yeah you have the configuration autonomy to brings. decide who you want to work with, where you want to work, and how how much time you want to spend. So that freedom, once you tasted it, um, is very difficult to go back to corporate life. And you know, so I I think we have many people out there listening to us who are who are in the earlier stages of their career. Mm. So some of them could take away mm. um, that, well, why don't I just start now mm. with my portfolio career? But I think you mentioned something interesting, which is that these people that, that you're working with, um, the executives, have gotten to a stage of their career where they have freedom. So what would, what's your advice to the younger, yeah. the younger generation of business professionals out I think, there? Yes, for, for the younger crowd, I feel they, they should try to make some money first. Yeah? And then you have more choices later. Um, sometimes it's difficult. Like for me, uh, because I do not need to worry about money so much, I can decide which client I take on and which clients I, I don't. 
when you do portfolio career and you're begging for business without support from a corporate, it can be very discouraging. And also, you need maybe 10 years of working for a corporate to build your social network. So later on, when you move to a portfolio career, this could be your customers or they could refer customers to you. So, that, so it's, you know, so in a certain sense, it's, it's, it's income that gives you, so, it gives you financial stability. It's building the social capital that, that you mentioned earlier. And, yeah. and, and what about also just a foundation from the standpoint of your skill set? Yeah. Right. Um, Do you see that the, that the executives you're working with, are they using their, their existing skills and applying them in new ways, or are they actually you know, really jumping across the river? Uh, and, no, and they, the they use side? some of their um, social skills, the goodwill they have accumulated. Then now they need to know, uh, learn about social media, video editing, public speaking. Um, so a few new digital skills to learn. But the, the social capital that accumulated over the years comes into play. And for the younger uh, audience out there, I would think, um, try to build your social capital as well. And know that small action now can create a big impact later on. For example, working or studying in a foreign country. A lot of time when we go overseas to, to study, we think, okay, we're going to study this particular subject, is the school good enough for this subject? But if you go to a foreign university, you learn about culture. You learn about people, behaviour, people who are different from you. So when I went uh, from Singapore to UK to do my masters, I get to interact with international students. And that set the stage for me to establish my international career. Because I, I, I needed to work with international colleagues and later part of my career, I need to manage uh, Europeans, Asian, Americans. So, well. so doing things, that, what I think I hear you saying is doing things that are, that are different, that are, could be outside your safety net, but could just be things that are quite different than what you're used to. It could be an international experience or it could be doing volunteer work, uh, yes. someone who's quite corporate and, and not doing those things now. But those things can create game-changing, little game-changing moments that actually create divergence and then later in life you look back and say it was those few moments yes. that, is that is that what you're saying that yes that led to that my divergence from where i was the small action that you take today may have a huge impact um 10 20 years down the road so um make that extra effort to know people within the school because your classmate could be the next head of central bank it will be among your your group not going to be the older people right it will be and it will be too late to know them when they, when they achieve their, that position. Well, thank you. I mean, many, many things uh, that, that I think you've offered our, our community. I mean, you, first off, you didn't say it, of course, but humility. I mean, I think I've been speaking with somebody who is, you, you've mentioned many things that show that in, in a certain sense, humility has been a, an important aspect of your life. Uh, you mentioned resilience, the idea that you've hit, a, hit more than one bump, as you said, yes. uh, in life, a failure or two. And, and recovered and moved on, and, and that those have actually been an important part of, of your development. Mm, yeah. um, you mentioned this idea of social capital, and I think throughout our conversation, one message has been branding, that we gotta start young, build our brand, think about who we wanna be, and, and, and put that out there in a humble way. Um, social capital building. Uh, you also mentioned the idea of you know these small small moments, game-changing moments, looking to create them, whether it's a new skill or an international experience. Anything else that, that you'd like to, to share to, um, to close out? I would say uh, think big, start small, act now. So small actions, think big. <laughs> act now. Act now. Thank you very much. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.